time and joining us to listen to what we have in store uh, on Meshworks 2020. And I hope you're all uh, staying safe uh, and social distancing is in place, but uh, we still have a way to connect with you over the web um, as close as it can get to discuss about uh, Meshworks 2020. Uh, my colleague uh, Gautaman is joining me and uh, he's trying to get the uh, slides on the screen for you. Uh, share it uh, on the screen for you. So while uh, the Meshworks, uh, uh, the slide set is uh, uh, coming up on the screen, uh, ju just wanted to give you an overview of Meshworks uh, 2020 and what is said that we're going to discuss today as how Meshworks helps uh, us to handle the workload as far as the hybrid and electric uh, uh, powertrain systems are concerned. Uh, that's what uh, we are going to look at uh, today. Uh, Meshworks 2020 was launched early this year uh, and uh, the, the previous versions are very well known to you and we had uh, um, several webinars of the previous version as well and we explained how Meshworks as a leader in morphing and parameterization of uh, finite element and CFT models graduated and moved up to become a preprocessor and becoming a CAE platform handling all your modeling needs. And that was the essence of the earlier version of the Meshworks. And with this 2020 version of Meshworks, uh, we are almost ready as an engineering uh, uh, platform, uh, so to say, um, in the sense that uh, um, the entire pre and post processing is one part of Meshworks 2020. There are all the other important elements that we have added up under concept works that really comes into play and helps you quickly synthesize finite element models. And especially that's very useful to you from the perspective of body structures or powertrain or for that matter, the chassis systems in the automotive context per se. Uh, besides that, uh, another very important uh, attribute of Meshworks 2020 that would uh, uh, come across to you would be upgraded uh, parameterization techniques and also the process automation engine uh, wherein we can automate a lot of CE standard operating procedures uh, uh, without really having to uh, uh, be an expert in the programming language and those are some of the things that we are going to look up today and mostly in the perspective of how we are going to use Meshworks 2020 to put together a battery systems model, if we want to, let's start at a cell level and then start doing the connections and make up a cell stack and take the cell stack and put it inside a, a battery housing and top it up with a cover. How do we prepare such a model uh, for crash simulations? How do we prepare such a model for a durability simulation? That is something that my colleagues are going to walk you through today. And as the next part of it is the motor, which is very important in our uh, hybrid as well as electric propulsion. Uh, we're going to demonstrate to you using a demonstrable simple model, though, uh, the process of modeling up the stators on the rotor side of the motor and also the motor housing and then all the connections which go and make motor an integral piece. And we're going to look at it from the NVH as well as the durability perspective there as well. Um, we're also going to present our uh, IPAM, which is the integrated parametric associative and uh, automated modeling option, which is very important piece of the pre-processing in Meshworks 2020. We're going to present you that through how it really helps in transmission and transaxle modeling. And also, how do we model engines? Engines are going to be there in the hybrid uh, drive train scenario anyway, so we are going to look up uh, at engine models and how our IPAM module helps there. Um, so, so, so with that uh, sort of an introduction, um, I would uh, request my colleague Gautaman, if he's still able to hear me out there, to short staring the screen and uh, let's go ahead and um, start the uh, demonstration. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, yeah, thanks. For so yeah. uh, I'm going to start off uh, this uh, with a couple of examples of uh, how do we model uh, battery cells. Uh, 
and integrate them uh, to the battery cover uh, and so on. And uh, what are the benefits while using meshworks uh, for this process and how efficient it is. Uh, starting off, uh, first one is uh, when it comes to uh, battery modeling, uh, here as we can see, uh, the parts consist of variety uh, of modeling techniques, like a couple of them could be shell models, some of them could be a tetra mesh models, and some of them could be hex mesh models. And the next part is also the connectivity. So the connectivity also could be a seam belt or a one bolt, also a 3D bolt. So uh, uh, by nature, it is very complicated to model all of them. Uh, so now we can see how meshworks can be efficiently used to model these kinds of uh, assemblies. Uh, so the first one is how do we efficiently uh, you know, model battery cells? As you can see here, we have modeled the anode plate and the cathode plate uh, using a mesh template. And uh, then we have covered it with the coolant plate and the coolant plate is connected uh, to the anode and cathode plates through 1D bowl, 1D uh, connections like beams and rigids. And then finally, uh, these models are stacked to create a fuel cell. And then the fuel cells are integrated into a battery housing. So all of them uh, can be uh, created using mesh templates. And now we are going to see in detail how do we do that. Um, so, coming to the next topic is on the electric motors. This is where we go into detail of the process. So, here we have how do we model uh, rotor stators and how do we uh, connect them together. So, the first uh, one is uh, uh, we have an assembly of model, which is the CAD model. And in this assembly, we have a couple of parts, which are tetra mesh parts, and some of them are hexa mesh parts. Now, uh, when we when it comes to tetra meshing, it is as easy as uh, a push of a button. So here, the user can select a CAD data, whichever he's interested in, provide a mesh template which takes care of the element size uh, and the feature conditions like fillets, tubes, washers, etc., and then a quality template. Based on that, we get a very nice output uh, with very minimal interaction. Uh, and then coming to the next topic is our hex mesh creation. So for the hex mesh creation, we have variety of function. And in this example, we are going to show a very couple of functions. So here, the tool automatically identifies it's a symmetrical part and gives you a sector of a model, which is being meshed as per the quality and the flow and replicated. And then we use something called as a parametric extrusion. Uh, even though the model is having various depths, uh, the parametric extrusion tool automatically segregates them and gives to the user in a one push button like this. And similarly, uh, if at all, we might be having a lot of gears uh, in the model. So meshworks can nicely be used uh, to create these kinds of models as well. So just like the previous example, uh, automatic identification and segregation of a sector of a gear tool and then meshing them as per the uh, meshing standards, and then creating a kind of uh, parametric extrusion output, as you can see here, and then using this output to replicate and recreate the full uh, gear tooth of the model. So here uh, we have seen a kind of a detailed modeling. What if we want to uh, use uh, simple mod modeling techniques, like in this case, uh, solenoid uh, wires, uh, so even though the CAD is very detailed, we would like to create a kind of a very simplified model for our analysis purpose. So that is also possible. And the next one is after creating the machine, we need to assign the materials and properties to the model. So here we use the assigned bill of material functions, wherein the materials and the properties are uh, given through CSV files and then the uh, bill of materials is assigned. The second portion is going to be how do we connect all the parts? So connection is through uh, two types. One is through contacts, rigids, and bolts. So in the case of contacts, the user can just simplify 
simply select all the components and based on our tolerance, the tool automatically creates all these kinds of contacts. And the contacts can be a tie contact or a simple surface contact. And uh, now we have to do the bolt connection. So in the case of a NASTRAND model, the bolt connection is going to be a 1D bolt representation. So like something you see on the screen now with a rigid and uh, a bolt, uh, which has been represented by a beam. And then if at all, if you want uh, to create a very detailed modeling, like a 3D bolt, that is also possible. Uh, so basically, the user can use templates, which is available in Meshworks to very quickly create the mesh. And the connectivity also can be created using the templates, like whether it is a 1D bolt or a very uh, detailed 3D bolt. So here, uh, Meshworks automatically identifies the areas and uh, gives the option to the user whether he would like to have a tetra, tetra bolt or a hexa bolt with what dimensions and so on. The user is not creating this bolt manually, but rather the tool is taking it into automatically. So uh, yeah, so the next topic is going to be on the transmission housing. So uh, uh, what are the benefits the user can get? So we have a very cool wrap function, which automatically takes care uh, of all the quality criteria based on the CAD data provided. And then the second one is how do we uh, create the auto parameterization and what are the benefits uh, using all these functions like Karthik mentioned the IPAM. Uh, so number one, since we have a templatized batch machine process, it's fast. And on top of that, we also have the auto parameterization capability, wherein with a single push of a button, Wherever required, the user can create all these parameters like the fillet radius change, the rip height change, and so on. And now that we have built up a single model, like let's say a durability model, with this model as a reference, the user can now create various other attribute models like a Nastran model with a different mesh template and a different uh, connectivity and so on. So now we talk about parameterization and design changes. So as we do changes on this FE model, how do we bring about all these changes to replicate on the CAD model? So that comes to the next topic of associative modeler. So here we have a CAD to mesh associativity and mesh to CAD associativity. So here you are seeing a baseline mesh and an optimized FE mesh and a baseline CAD. With these three information, Meshworks very nicely gives you the optimized CAD output, which can be shared to the CAD engineers to do all the preliminary studies like the cost estimation, die design, and packaging. These are all the very important factors of uh, uh, the Meshworks, how easy and efficient it is. So I would love, I, I would uh, now like to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, stage to Karthik to give the uh, brief summary. Thank you very much, Gautaman, for all the uh, uh, demonstrations on uh, battery as well as motor and then the transmission and the engine. I think this is the way we are uh, uh, trying to uh, bring in a lot of efficiencies, if you see, through our uh, IPAM module. Um, so with that, we would like to share with you what is uh, the next uh, the the takeaway uh, from this uh, uh, session. So as you uh, as you really uh, uh, noticed, uh, one of the very important uh, uh, point that that uh, came up was the ability to. Um, uh, when, when we created an engine model, we were able to not only create the mesh model with all the connections, that's the regular pre and post processing game, uh, but we were also able to parameterize a lot of the uh, entities, especially the rib heights or the wall thicknesses. So that is something that you see here as part of the benefit that the user gains from parametric modeler. Also, in the context that we looked at both the battery models and the motor models, 
uh, if if at all we can start off with a single cat for example like how we started off the motor and if we can have a machine template as well as the connection template and the solver attribute template it is possible for us to generate a nash in the nvh model as well as the durability model of the motor simultaneously that's the benefit that you gain from the integrated modeler and as you saw on the transmission model uh, we were very nicely able to uh, connect the changes that was done on the CAE model and take back to the baseline CAD model. So that way the entire process was almost bi-directional seamless. So that is the benefit of associative modeler. And also please note the associative modeler is also a very important pillar as it helps you to reuse your existing mesh. As a team, we have several mesh models available from our previous uh, product lines. And if there is a new CAD data that is coming in and it is a variation of an existing product, you can depend on associative modeler to sort of take the existing one and improvise that with maybe addition of four more ribs at certain areas and certain more adapter holes in some other zone. So Meshworks updates the existing model with all the dependencies. And that way, that is a very powerful option uh, that you have in Meshworks. Uh, that takes care of it um, and together as you can see in this slide there is a little uh, circular diagram which is what we see as the uh, as the simulation framework that the next generation engineering cycle would bring to us wherein we have to look at the simulation uh, with an entire framework of the engineering data that it generates and also the suitability to adaptive uh, uh, manufacturing techniques and also a lot of the data might be operating on a cloud, so we should be ready for that. And also we should be uh, ready for a model based design or a system integration kind of a scenario where CAE either post simulates uh, in a framework. So an automation is also very important uh, part of it. So with all these uh, forces playing around in the simulation world, we certainly feel the IPAM platform that is presented to you on the screen is very well suited and it really matches nicely uh, with the circular diagram in terms of the other important technology pieces that are going to come together uh, to the uh, simulation um, uh, engineers as we can see. Um, the next important slide uh, uh, talks about uh, the real benefit that we are going to gather today based on what we have seen. Um, is with the integrated modeling uh, we have eliminated the process where the user or an engineer creates two models you know he sort of replicates the entire meshing procedure again connections procedure and the solver deck setup that replication is all gone with the help of the solver templates and connection templates they get done automatically through the integrated modeling and the process automation is also something that we have, you stay tuned to hear from us in the next uh, webinars as we address meshworks 2020 there uh, we are also going to present how we are able to uh make a framework to automate the cae sops without having us to master certain programming languages and that's a very user driven methodology so that we want to present it's very uh very interesting as such an associative modeler i already mentioned to you that uh, it's the best way to reuse your models and parametric modeler is a great way for you to explore designs and create several design options and study them and make the what if scenario investigation almost um, CAE centric, in which case that we don't wait for CAT, we just go ahead, parameterize the model and run the simulation and check out what, what, what's the outcome. And in a nutshell, what we want to present to you uh, from this uh, uh, today's webinar is a very simple message as DEP Meshworks 2020 is a platform uh, that addresses the product development process right from the concept stage it has all the tool sets to help you really do a lot of upfront uh, uh, simulation work uh, with its concept works tool sets as well as with morphing and parameterization tool set. You're almost ready to synthesize your models faster, optimize your models faster right at the concept stage. As you run into the detailed design stage where a lot of CAD development has already happened, Meshworks comes in handy to you to build your models, mesh models faster, connect them, and also use the IPAM modules to get all the acceleration that you need. And again, here also the parametric model comes into picture. Parametric C models help you to do the design exploration even more at the design and development stage. 
last stage as we get into uh, manufacturing uh, side of it where we still want to check few things uh, from the manufacturability perspective especially maybe the heat affected zone uh, for the seam welds or maybe the weld optimization or the adhesive optimization uh, or the ability to map the weld distortion in the assemblies back into the panet element uh, model all of those nine yards are taken care of by meshworks when we are looking at it from the manufacturing angle if at all we want to do reverse vintage in plastics which is an outcome from the mount flow kind of simulation and we want to superimpose all the the warping on the part back on the baseline uh, cad data and we want to understand what countermeasures that we can take to reduce the part warpage guess what meshworks tools are ready to help you there as well so in an essence meshworks as an engineering platform from its uh, version 2020 it's ready to help you on the body structures powertrain be it hybrid uh, or purely electric and the chassis systems which carry either a hybrid or an electric drivetrain and also the interiors and exteriors of the vehicle so this is what uh, we had to mention to you today in terms of introducing what uh, meshworks 2020 has in store for you we would request you to stay tuned we have many more interesting messages as well as some of the important tools that we look forward to demonstrate to you which really would uh, we feel would help you um, save time uh, in our uh, uh, engineering process and also helps you to explore the design more than traditionally uh, using up the time to build up the models so that's the philosophy that we want to bring up and present to you in the next webinars uh, kindly stay tuned uh, with that, uh, we are open for questions, if any, uh, that way we can answer them. All right, so so uh, some of the questions uh, uh, that are on or all on the uh, hex meshing is uh, uh, especially so um, i think uh, yes uh, predominantly the as you saw on the motor component as well as on the battery systems uh, we would have certain components modeled as hexa and certain other components modeled as tetra uh, perfectly meshworks has uh, several hex meshing algorithms uh, beyond the regular ones that we are used to uh, in terms of solid mapping options as well as the solid meshing options linear solid options all those options are all available in meshworks and where it really scores on hex meshing and capturing different geometries that you see in battery as well as on the uh, motor uh, is the extruded hex meshing where we are able to capture all the features take them to a plane mesh them and actually extrude them so we are going to again demonstrate in detail that uh, in one of the webinars that is upcoming stay tuned and uh, that will answer you uh, the question on the hex meshing and certainly uh, the process is more efficient it sort of saves you uh, close to 50% of the time in certain complicated components uh, to generate a hex mesh if you are looking for that. And another question uh, is very interesting. It sort of says, what is your comparison with uh, other uh, tools that are that uh, we are using and that are existing? Uh, very good question. So here in Meshworks 2020, what we have made is an attempt where it really uh, places itself as a horizontal uh, engineering platform catering to all the vertical requirements of a product development cycle. Uh, the vertical requirement, if it comes from the concept stage, Meshworks has all the tool sets to accelerate the processes of building up a concept uh, model. Later on, going into the detailed engineering phase, Meshworks has all the tool sets to take a, a, a CAD data and do all the uh, mesh modeling as well as the connections and the loading and boundary conditions set up and a creating a solver ready input data deck and also the parameterization comes into picture there where um, meshworks has extensive ways to parameterize your finite element model it is no more restricted to shape it is not restricted to uh, the thicknesses it is not restricted to materials it can handle a lot of design enabler parameters like beads bulkheads or the topology parameters or a doubler kind of parameters. So the, 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 it is very rich and very extensive. So all those parameterization can be uh, brought in the finite element model, which makes your design exploration very easier. And uh, you, can, you can be, the entire process becomes rich with data so that we can do a lot of uh, data-based uh, activity on top of that. 
and it also caters to a uh, certain level of manufacturing uh, CAE as well. So with this, what we are uh, comparing against um, is all these are available in a single canvas uh, that we can flip through, including the post-processing modules, by the way. Um, so it's a very connected single canvas that gets you all the way from concept to manufacturing CAE. It has all the modeling tool sets uh, and the concept model building tool sets and the morphing and parameterization leadership for you to get it. And that is uh, sort of, I would say, the comparison that I would uh, 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 place against uh, that for that question. Uh, the other question is also to see how do you uh, bring, uh, bring about modeling uh, windings, especially uh, in the motor. Yeah, I think we're going to address a separate uh, session on that. Uh, we have certain process automation tool sets that are created already, which handle um, how do we go from a wire to a braid, and then how do we make it into a, 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 a bundle, and then we twist it, and then how do we wind it? So we have generated some process automation routine for it. I think uh, we would, uh, in one of the next webinars, uh, we can uh, come up and uh, discuss that as well. So, so those were uh, some of the questions. And uh, also the other question is that, uh, is it only uh, a CAE model builder? Does it have any modeling tools for CFD? Absolutely, yes. Uh, this is a platform though. Today you saw only the models, uh, modeling uh, demonstrations, which are more catering to structure models, but uh, absolutely yes, for CFD uh, modeling. Also, we do have certain tool sets, especially the thermal models. That was the question when you saw the engine model. Yes, it is right. We do generate uh, very nice uh, skin mesh models, which are input for your polygonal mesh generation uh, in a CFD application. So I think those were some of the answers that we wanted to uh, bring up to you and uh, share with you. Um, I think those were the summary of the questions that we had got. Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, taking your time and joining us live for this uh, webinar. We uh, look forward to keep you updated on the next uh, series of top interesting topics that we are planning to take up and uh, demonstrate to you the value that Meshworks uh, brings in. Until then, stay tuned and uh, stay safe. Uh, take care. Thank you.